<coughs> Man, excuse me. Do a follow up. What do you say? <clears throat> Welcome to Little Creek Bee Ranch. Amazing what you can learn by just watching. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it is May 13th, three o'clock in the afternoon. Warmer now than it was yesterday bees on the move into big nectar we're still still kind of wet today is thursday clear day tomorrow partly cloudy today partly cloudy tomorrow rain coming saturday all week long apparently great Okay, so let's talk some bees. Let me get you a... All right, I'll just do it this way. Out we go. Different angle. <clears throat> it's about... I'm sorry. Apiary management and um, bees. I mean, together but separate. Strategies and big on strategies. So, if you're new to watching videos with us, or watching our videos, welcome to Little Creek Bee Ranch. Ken Davis, teaching class in session, sustainable beekeeping. All about the bees, <clears throat> not opinions. So what's going on? Well, the closest colony to us right now, you my stopwatch going, closest colony to us was the swarm from yesterday, the big swarm from yesterday. We'll load that video later tonight. And if you're, if you're following along, this is a pretty good sized swarm, so we put it in a, a deep box in a medium. Room enough. <clears throat> About two basketball sizes worth. But what about the other boxes? So let's say the box nearest us is box number one. So I don't have to really point. One, two, three, four, five. So box hive number one was the swarm from yesterday. The girls are coming back from the field with great reports of success. Trying to figure out how the heck do we get through this brick? <clears throat> They'll go around the brick or through the holes. I particularly like the bricks that have holes in them. They'll go through them. It's like it's not a big deal. But why the brick? It, it slows them down just a tad. I think of think of the brick like pumping the brakes. You know, pump the brakes on the girls a little bit. They can get they can get a little bit rambunctious. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes scout bees are still working out there and they'll come back and dance the colony right out. Seen that. So we don't ever leave um, the box that we catch the swarm in, like right there at the site. 
and come back tomorrow likely they would be gone the scout bees they don't really recognize that as home yet until they've been moved that's like our swarm spot like we stopped over it's a stopover we're not really ready for a home and they'll dance them right out of the box so we moved this one i don't know this one wasn't moved very far oops about um oh 10 yards maybe something like that <laughs> oh, excuse me. 10 yards uh, boy brick trick can they still leave yeah they can will they mm, unlikely now what i didn't show wasn't able to show in the film yesterday was the frames that i put in the middle this is a i think this is a trick principle whatever you want to call it in the middle of the deep box was the best frames like comb like older comb good to lay in couple of them together and that queen will find those well-shaped frames she'll find them and she'll go right to them and start laying in them. So if I, if you can, and not everybody can do this because they don't have all the comb built up, you, you give the queen a couple of really good frames in the middle. Now, this gets into Zentari strategy. And if you don't know what Zentari is, uh, you can search our YouTube channel. I'm not gonna cover that right now. It's just a microbial spray to protect it from wax moth damage. Oh, written a whole ebook on it. I don't know. A whole, a whole bit. It's a whole different class right there on Zentari. Anyway, so so to build up your comb reserve, you got to protect it, you know. And it comes into play right here. It comes into play. So if I give that queen, I'm scooping off the tree. I give her a couple of good frames in the middle oh man she's gonna go down there and she's gonna lay she's gonna lay eggs like crazy lady and then the angled brick on the porch now as weird as this is some of, some of you may not be like this I, I was my mind was battling me i didn't want to do the brick thing and my my bee teacher he had to get kind of tough on me <laughs> grab me by the shirt sleeve and drag me over to the colony sack now now watch he put the brick on and it wasn't just a couple of minutes he said now how many bees are in the air i said three he said they're home you're done i said that fast he goes yes bees make her decision very quick so any time that I've done what we call the brick trick, absconding rates are just nearly zero. Hardly ever would they leave. So these two little strategies together, putting a couple of good frames of comb in the middle and then a brick trick on the outside or on the porch, we're not blocking them as, may, as well as we're making a detour forcing them to make a little bit of a detour and if you watch closely if you can see on the face of their box <clears throat> more bees are coming out <clears throat> they're orienting like what is this house this looks different than what we had so they're orienting to what their house looks like its location the sun and off they go so I leave that brick on there, oh, a good while, two, two weeks to a month, not in a hurry to remove it. <clears throat> now, hive number two over there is a catch box. And hive number three and hive number four. Hive number five is a dead out. Hive number two. I'm not sure the bees are in there. I see, I see a bee going in. I'm not sure there's a colony in there as much as probably the temp queen stick is drawing bees in there and they're like hunkered down on this stick, the temp queen stick. They, they find it 
and they go, uh, they go, oh, look, we found a queen. Well, we think it's a queen. And they're kind of staying put. Now, follow along with me on this journey. So if I go check the catch boxes that have Swarm Commander and Temp Queen on them, in them, and if I open up and I find, I don't know, a baseball size of bees, maybe even a softball size of bees, and no queen, ooh, I'm inclined to get a queen and put in on them. There's enough bees there, a softball size would probably do, to take care of a new queen and just start a new group. Because the temp queen stick held held them in. Swarm Commander says, come here. Come to this box. Temp Queen says, stay here. Queen Mandibular Pheromone. Everything's okay. Stay right here. And you'll probably build up a passel of bees right there on the Temp Queen stick. And don't discount that. It, there probably won't be a queen in them. And it could be a mix of bees of different places. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the volume. If it's a golf ball size of bees, man, I'm not going to worry about it. But if it gets over a baseball size to a softball size, okay, I can get a queen, order a queen, whatever, because <clears throat> I want the queen to go in right then. In this strategy, I would want to put a mated queen, known age, known breed, in on them, boom, right, as fast as I can. But if you don't, if nobody explains to you and nobody teaches you, you would not you would not really think this way. And this is why I get so sensitive to sustain sustainability. Key strategies you got to think. You got to think your way through. So as we work the colonies here and we are catching swarms, the apiaries filling up. And so the catch boxes will either be vacant and removed and a new colony put in its place or, or um, there are going to be enough bees held in the catch box by the temp queen stick with no queen. And if it's a big enough size, baseball, softball size, I'll put a queen in on them. Okay. Now... Box number three, that's a double medium set. Box number two, hive number two, is a deep and a medium. Number three is a double medium. That's the one that I, oh, it's been over a week or more ago. I had bees on a Russian cyan and I had to go to dinner with the family and I had to hurry. <laughs> so I grabbed the cyan and just swept them off onto the porch, gently. I should have taken the top off and brushed them right into the top because they planted on the face of that uh, box hive number three for a week almost in the rain and cold and the queen never went down to the porch and she never went in the hole there's a hole on the top of that box never went into the hole and you go okay now excuse me <laughs> box number hive number four that bottom box is a 1 by 12 empty box no rabbit no frames in the bottom box and on top of that is a deep box catch box swarm commander temp queen inside it and there have been bees going in and out maybe inspecting not sure we're not done with swarming by any stretch whether they're my bees leaving or bees coming into the area. Then hive number five is a dead out. It's got some honey. It's a, it's a, a number, number five is a deep box with a, a medium on top. It's got, it's got a good amount of honey in it, probably three quarters. And I want to, not today, but I want to take that medium off and set it out, it's winter honey, I want to set it out for the bees to uh, suck back up and reprocess. 
I want those frames out of there, the comb. That's what I, I want. I don't, I don't want to spin the honey. There's probably some bitterweed. It's, it's older winter honey. I just assume the bees work it back out of there, a free-for-all. I set it way out away from the apiary. Box the honey, you set out 40, 50 yards away from the apiary so you don't create a, a big robbing issue in your apiary. But I do want that comb out of that medium. And I have another one to my right like that, the same scenario. <clears throat> I want the the brood frames, brood comb out of there as well. So therefore, if I have a swarm come in, now I need you to follow along with me, wherever it is, but particularly here where we're filming, we've got like two rows, two and a half rows of bees. The whole whole area here is an apiary. It has a smell a bee smell and I promise the bees there's bees above our head traveling to and fro not our bees bees traveling to and fro and they know this apiary is here and they'll come down from, from above and they'll check out the offerings and they'll remember this and when a swarm comes in they'll come they'll come hang up nearby hang up nearby. So my point is your apiary with all the bee smell can draw in a swarm. It will hang up nearby. Don't assume it's a swarm from your box unless you just saw it like actively leave. But swarms want to travel. They want to get that travel out of them. So more times than not it's going to be a swarm that comes to you from afar you'll come out to your area whatever and maybe you see a swarm hanging you know i don't know 30 yards away it might be yours we don't know unless you just saw them leave i don't get too worked up about it i've seen swarms come to me and they're a different color, like dark chocolate. Are you serious? I don't have that color bees. Ha, finders keepers. <laughs> and jump on that swarm. So, so more than a few times I've had bees show up. And you go, what the heck? Now this is why we put Russian cyan's around. And we got this big tree to my right. We'll trim back that tree. But we want that tree to stay there because... It's kind of a backup to the backup. My primary backup, it, well, it is my work, you know, but I'm saying if I'm not here running errands or go out of town, whatever, now I've got a Russian sign sitting there that's got pheromones on it. That's what I prefer them to hit. But they may not. Like the case yesterday, they hit a limb on the tree. So let's go look at the tree. Let's see where we carved out. <laughs> uh,